He named himself for a tragic screen legend and an infamous spree killer. He calls himself a performance artist, playing the role of rock star. His first brush with notoriety came in 1994 when he was charged with indecent exposure on a concert stage. Although cleared of that charge, Marilyn Manson has since emerged as an incendiary rabble rouser. I expect problems, you know, always with whatever I do, but that's part of being a provocative artist, which is something I'll always be. And he is the rock music phenomenon who the governor of Oklahoma calls proof that society's moral values continue to crumble. <laughs> it's huge CD hit. By the way, this is a great album. Angie Christ Superstar, Marilyn Manson. <laughs> You. Okay. You have been to prison. They have tried to arrest you, but they haven't succeeded. Right. Right. Don't Christian groups need somebody to protest against? Isn't there a symbiotic relationship well, there's, between there's, whoever there's they're against, be it you or the gays or whatever, abortion clinics? Don't they need each other? There's an old saying that the devil has always been the church's best friend because he's kept him in business. And I think, yeah. like you're saying, They've picked me to be there, but I think, I don't mind the protesting, I just wish that they would get the facts straight because they think that I do a lot of things, but I'm really about individuality and that's really the bottom line. Now, there are rumors about what you do and then there's the reality of what you do. Mm -hmm. There are, for example, you do rip pages out of the Bible in your concert, you do wipe your ass with the American flag. Mm -hmm. Some of these things, you have to admit, are controversial. Absolutely. I mean... They're designed to make people think, but the point with the Bible or flags is to say, it's only as valid as you make it in your heart. A, a it's piece all of paper, about perception, isn't it, Marilyn? A piece of paper or a, a piece of cloth doesn't mean anything. It's what you believe. And I want people to think about what they believe. I want them to consider if everything they've been taught, if that's what they want to believe or that's what they've been told that they have to believe. If you want to blame rock music for things, think about... Uh, what the Bible's done, what about Heaven's Gate or Jim Jones or the Ku Klux Klan, right. what they do in the That's name of Christ. They totally defy the Bible. Yeah, but the Bible says well, if you love God and hate your brother, you're a liar and God is not in you. Obviously right. you have not read that. No, I've any read the Bible, but I'm just saying any what people do in the name of the Bible. Bible is a liar and God isn't in him. So, you know, if we're going to quote I'm the Bible, what, you what complain that people, in the people take you God. out of context, don't take the Bible out of context. The Bible certainly has been the inspiration for an amazing amount mm -hmm. of unbible-like activity. That's what I'm saying. Absolutely. Why, why does everybody want to put the tag on, you know, oh, the Bible is evil, or we need to no, question I'm not saying the, that. I like, like the Bible. That. I'm just saying I don't like the way people misuse it just as much as people could misuse it. if you yeah, like music. it, then be the standard and do it. That's yeah, the problem. I like the it as a book, of the just majority like I like the cat in the hat. Say there's something and they're not. No, no it's not. It's responsible because I'm telling them the truth. No sex and we haven't told people violence. the truth. No, you're making an irresponsible the suppression of sex throughout history that's made people so violent. I think. In a women. You're, 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 you're making the irresponsible. I want people to think, but I'm not trying to think I can save the world. You know, maybe the world doesn't deserve to be saved. Maybe they only deserve to be entertained before they're all destroyed. Yeah, just about perspectives when we were talking about Christ and me being not like. Christ. I mean, if you look at things from a different point of view, one person could see Christ as being someone a lot like me. Someone with long yeah. hair, had a lot of fans, a lot of people that uh, fought. He had 12 disciples. That could have been his posse, for all we know. <laughs> and people were he hung out. Them. He see, hung out with being, hookers. But he being drank. like Christ people is different than him. being Christ. And they Christ. killed him. And they killed him. <laughs> But and being like Christ is different than being Christ. No, I'm just they saying, have a person. And I said, and I, since we're on national television, I want to ask you. Okay. What standards do you have and where do you draw the line as far as what is good and what is evil? I have basic principles that kind of exist in all religions, Such even as. Christianity. Such as? Well, the fundamentals, you know, you don't kill people, you, mm -hmm. you know, a basic good person. Okay, so... Probably you the belong, same as yours. Do you? No, they're not the, the same. What yeah. make of the reaction of the people, especially in America, you've been having a hard time? Well, the reaction was necessary because um, too many people were asleep for too long and willing to accept beliefs that, uh, that they've been told all their lives. And I just wanted to uh, come along and make a record that make people question those beliefs, think about uh, their fears and, and, uh, and understand themselves more. Well, the problems that you've been having, I mean, this reaction is an exclusive American thing, an American thing, or you experience this sort of reaction also in Europe, in other places? Uh, Europe, 
and uh, in Asia uh, look at religion differently. Uh, religion in America is very much like a business. Uh, it has very little to do with spirituality or God. It's more politics, and that's what I dislike most about it. So our problems usually remain in America. You were against the fascism of beauty. What sort of beauty were you talking about, and what sort of fascism of beauty you were talking about? Uh, it's more the, the idea in America that I'm against. Uh, that television uh, instills this if uh, you don't wear a certain type of clothing or you don't drive a certain type of car or you don't believe in a certain god then you're not going to be accepted and it's kind of like an underlying form of fascism it's not as blatant as things that we've seen in the past but it's just as damaging because you grow up feeling like uh, you can never fit in and it makes you feel like uh, you're not a person and then that, I think that's a good problem I'm telling people what I see, and some people are scared of that because they don't like the way I see it. Manson's last CD, Antichrist Superstar, was a critical and commercial breakthrough. And I don't want you, and I don't need you. But that release and his Dead to the World concert tour ignited a firestorm of outrage. The way the world reacted to Antichrist Superstar was just as much a part of my creation as the music itself. When I sit back at it and look at it a year later, the whole thing is my creation, not just the music, but the reaction, what the world made me into. It's all part of what I intended. There's a 29-year-old rebel who's still evolving emotionally. Are we going to listen to a kinder, gentler Marilyn Manson? I don't think so. I just think there's a greater balance to become this strong superman that I set out to be, I didn't realize that I had to have weaknesses as well. So I balanced myself out more. I'm more extreme now than ever. Just in what in way? Ways. I feel more. I feel other people's pain. I feel other people's joy. And it's it affected me as an artist. I've learned to have empathy now to something I didn't have before. People that are outside aren't thinking. They're, they're basing their hatred for me on, uh, on what they think I am. And, and that itself is the type of uh, fear and ignorance that's caused so many people to suffer throughout history. There's an old saying, the devil's always been the church's best friend. And I think in this case, they've made me to be the devil. And that's a role that uh, apparently I'm pretty good at. My show and my performance and my music and what it's about is going against the mainstream you know christ in, in most circumstances has been a metaphor for uh the closed-mindedness and the traditions you know that we've been raised on and, and my point is to to question those and to realize if you're believing something because you want to or if you're, you've been told to and that's really the bottom line of everything that i represent did you endorse mass shootings no absolutely not but so why you and Columbine? Because I happened to have a song in The Matrix had just come out, and they're shooting, and I had a video on TV called Rock is Dead. The kids weren't even fans of me. I think they probably thought that I was too much of a sissy because I was wearing lipstick. I don't really know. I don't Did know what's get, going on with them. Well, you must have got a bad rap from that. Yeah, it's kind of put my whole career on hold. Uh, but a lot of people don't know about it because uh, I had to really take an active stance legally against uh, a lot of a lot of uh, news places for, for using Marilyn Manson, which is trademarked, much like Mickey Mouse. It's not right. Did you it's sue people? No, but I had to put a cease and desist order, so now people don't talk about it. So in some ways, I feel mad that, you know, other than Bowling for Columbine, which a lot of people at airports and things like that always say, oh, I didn't know you are so smart, what you said in Bowling for Columbine. And I always want to say, I didn't know you are so stupid, but I don't know you. As soon as it happened, did you know you are going to be somehow involved? Before they were showing anything, they said a gang of kids wearing Marilyn Manson t-shirts shot up a school or something live on Fox, and I was saying, oh, this is why, you know. So now I think that I've been blamed for about 36 school shootings. There is a press release uh, from your record company that says, nudity, self-mutilation, chickens, arrests, spitting. See them now before they're in jail, dead, or the biggest rock band in America. 
And I'm wondering, uh, like, what is, is it shock value? Is it deep meaning? Is it science project? What motivates your work? It's a little bit of everything. Um, I like to experiment with uh, people's fears, see what uh, motivates them, what scares them. And at the same time, I also uh, sometimes mock the whole sensationalism of it all anyways. Sometimes it seems like I'm trying to be shocking, but I'm mocking the fact that people take it so shocking. Mm -hmm. Shock point's never been uh, the point. Mm -hmm. It's just uh, sometimes easier to get things across to people if you say it in a way that gets their attention more than something else would. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so you sort of intentionally bring it way over the top. So play with it. Play with the sure. image. Yeah. yeah. And um, the embodiment of fears, or trying to face your fears, through what you do, mm -hmm. um, and in a way, if you embody your fear, you almost ha have some sort of control over your fears. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, that's that's the way that I've always overcome things that terrified me by becoming them. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, hopefully, if uh, people who like our music can learn from that, maybe uh, I shared something with them that means something to them. You know, that's the most that I can try and do is to make people think. And confront stuff. Sure. Yeah. Um, what What is like your biggest fear? Of myself, I guess. Fear of uh, losing control. Because I like so many times to put myself uh, very close to chaos. Mm -hmm. But that makes me appreciate control even more. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like you've, you've got control over the chaos? Or is it just a, an attempt at it? That's an everyday battle. You know? mm -hmm which makes life uh, worth living. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If it wasn't that way, it would be pretty boring. Um, I was reading somewhere, I think it was in uh, Option Magazine, um, you were talking about the idea, or you believe in the idea of uh, survival of the fittest yes. and social Darwinism, mm -hmm. um, about being strong. Mm -hmm. um, but how about, how does that uh, re reflect into society? How about the idea that society tries to take care of the weak, is that a pointless pursuit? Um, I just think it's something that people need to think about more. In America, through the part of Christianity, um, we're raised to uh, love everybody. And I think when you love everyone, that really depreciates the value of love. You know, the things that I love, I would die for and I care deeply for. But I, I couldn't say that I loved everything. Or it would have no value. And the same thing goes for hate. Um, so it, if it was all hate, there would be dirt. Sure. You, you, you need, you need, a, you cosmos. need, you need it all. Yeah. Sort of a Taoist idea. A little bit, yeah. Yeah. Um, you cover a Patti Smith's Rock and Roll Nigger. Um, why did you do that? I thought it was a song that nobody else was brave enough to cover these days. Um, because of political correctness, people are terrified of using a word like that, but I thought hopefully in the same way that she did when she was writing it, it demystifies it and makes it not such a bad thing. And at the same time, it, the song talks about um, being on the outside of society and uh, not wanting to be a part of what everybody else is trying to make you fit into. You come from Florida, and that's one of the most conservative states in America. Do you think that has anything to do with your work, trying it to go a, against that yeah. sort of censorship? Florida's, you know, got a great responsibility in, in why I exist the way I do because mm. it's a state where it's very sunny, everyone's having a good time and going to the beach and tourists and if you're smart enough to realize that life's not just uh, about that, mm -hmm. you're going to build up some resentment and uh, the way that I put that to good use is by making music. Some other people may, you know, take it out in a different way, and that's where you end up with uh, you know, Jeffrey Dahmer and Ted mm -hmm. Bundy and people like that. But I think there's no real difference between artists and killers. I think that's the way that they're expressing their art. You know, it's not not necessarily the right way, but um, they weren't lucky enough to figure out uh, a good avenue like uh, people like us have. Mm -hmm. Are your parents very supportive of your work? Yeah. Yeah. In a strange way. They, 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 they think it's cool that you're famous or something like that? Or no, I don't know if they understand everything that I say, but I think they probably feel responsible for the way I've turned out, so they have no choice but to like it. Support you. Yeah, so.
They're, they've always been understanding, you know. I went to a private Christian school, but... Is that right, A? My parents weren't very religious. They just wanted me to get a good education, but unfortunately I got all the baggage that came mm. along with that. Do you think the message is, if there is one that you could... Everybody's going to pick their own, but I think uh, I like to tell people the way I see the world, and if they can learn something from it, then uh, that makes a difference. But I think uh, the bottom line would be to uh, be what you want to be and don't try and fit into uh, something that everyone else wants you to be. You know? The world is as much as you want to make it, you know? and if you want to make it your way, that's the way you should make it. Are you ever aggravated at misinterpretations of your work? No, because... Uh, you know, confusion is also a great form of communication. And, you know, it's really, uh, it's, it's neat sitting here talking to you because I was expecting somebody that was way, way more sort of in your face and you're very sort of very grounded and well-spoken. Um, There's a time and a place for everything, I think. You yeah. Know? You need to communicate in different ways in different circumstances and, you know, I don't think it would be appropriate for me to throw around stools and break things right yeah. now. And uh, you've had a lot of influence over your fans, over the way that they dress and so forth. And you're really looking, you have a different um, attire today, nice suit. Thank is it a different, uh, are you going in a different direction uh, image-wise? Well, I just wouldn't want to be predictable. Yeah, absolutely. And you have, a, you, the band has a real sort of androgynous quality. It seems like they're very in touch with both female and male sides. Yeah, I think... Uh it's part of getting across the point of Marilyn Manson and the dichotomy and of that extreme positive and extreme negative that can go into, you know, sexual imagery also. Mm. I think uh, it's too boring to have things spelled out plainly. I think uh, the more options you have, the more exciting life can be for you mm -hmm. overall. And more possibilities. And, uh, you know, that helps me to evaluate myself when I think about... Uh, the things that I do in my life and stuff, you know, because I can go from times where, uh, you know, I'll experiment with, with anything and then uh, I go over times like today where I feel completely grounded and sometimes, you know, when uh, your whole life is so chaotic, when it's uh, in control, it's sometimes more interesting than when it's chaotic. Mm. Like a lot of people will say, you know, when they've been doing drugs all their life, if they're sober, they feel more screwed up than they were mm. when they were on drugs. Mm. The same thing kind of applies. Mm. So, for religious people to indict entertainment as being violent, it's kind of ironic because Christ was the first celebrity and all entertainment comes from religion. And my jaw being removed is to represent the silencing of, uh, you know, people with dangerous opinions. So do you see uh, that there's a parallel between, say, Jesus Christ and Marilyn Manson? Well, it was something that I wouldn't have looked at in the past. You know, I started out with Antichrist Superstar, which was just completely opposing uh, religion altogether. But now I wanted to uh, re-examine things and, and interpret them in, on my own terms and say, well, I, I can now enjoy the image of Christ or the story of Christ, but on my own terms, not the way that I was taught to. You were talking about having been fe felt as if uh, people had, in by and large, persecuted you for your music. Um, do you feel similarly, like, do you, do you ever feel kind of like a martyr as Jesus was or the pantheon of saints? Um, I mean, I look at that a lot on the record and I try and bring up parallels. The three people that I point to a lot on the album, Christ, Kennedy, and John Lennon. And, uh, you know, I'm not gonna, put myself in the same ranks as any of them, but I was trying to find things in common with them, you know, maybe learn from their lives a bit on the record. Do you see yourself as a rebel or a revolutionary? It's hard to be either, you know, it's hard to be either anymore. Um, as long as I try and surprise myself, I try and challenge myself, always, you know, never be set in my own ways. like writing a song, always being able to do it in a different way, then I'm still being revolutionary. But I think the lesson learned on this record is, you know, you can't change the world, you have to change yourself. Hollywood that I'm going to put out early next year. Did you ever feel like, like, did you ever question yourself and go, oh my gosh, there's so much, I, I really have a lot of um, sort of power over people. Did you ever go, my goodness, what's going to, like, the types of things that can result in that? 
No, you know, I think it was, I think it was kind of uh, disrespectful of the media to present that whole event and exploit Columbine as if it were the first time something like that happened. Things like that have been happening for, you know, years, you know, even in the 50s and the 60s. Um, and it's, uh, you know, it, that was the main point of me to say that, you know, it, it's not about guns, it's not about uh, what people are watching, it's man's nature to be violent. You know, it's up to us, it's our personal responsibility to uh, break that cycle. You know, that's part of evolution. You know, Cain killed Abel. These are the first two people on the earth. Mm -hmm. You know, there was no TV for them to be inspired. There was no Marilyn Manson for them. Right. I believe. But I think uh, in America now, people have grown very cynical of politics, and I'm sure it's the same way here. And music and art are the things that do really affect the world and not in a bad way that they're trying to suggest it's the one thing that people care about it's the only thing that matters to them you know so it's not something that should be censored or taken away do you think government should have any say over the arts be it good or bad i think there needs to be guidelines there needs to be some sort of boundary you know otherwise you don't know what the limits are and it's always my job to keep pushing that boundary but um I don't think that uh, anybody should be able to decide except for the people who are listening. You know, the parents, uh, if they want to not let their kids watch a show, then they just turn the TV off. It's really about lazy parents, it seems like to me, people that aren't willing to raise their kids. Mm -hmm. Right now we have a phone uh, audience, actually. Jacob, yes. you got a question? Well, I've been following and admiring your work for quite a while now, and I always wanted to know, what exactly pushed you to do what you do now, and who do you admire the most? Um, that's tough, tough question who I admire the most. I, I think I kind of show that on the new record, you know, with uh, John Lennon, Kennedy, and Christ. And um, I think I admire anybody that stands up and has an opinion. You know, I think that's why I worked with Eminem. I think that he uh, may be someone that you don't always agree with what he's saying, but the fact that he's saying it, and he's doing it in a clever way, and he's talented. I, I admire him for that. Um, the thing that pushed me to become what I am is probably the same thing that that, that you're feeling as well. You know, uh, anybody who has awakened enough to see the way the world is, you can't really contain yourself after that. A lot of people go through life blind and ignorance is bliss, but once you know, then you have to do something about it. And so instead of being negative, I try and focus it all into something positive like music. Um, no, you know, if you're a true nihilist, that can be very um, tiring, you know, but there is elements of nihilism in what I do. But that's about um, destroying and creating, not just destroying. Mm -hmm. I think that's the thing that uh, sets me apart from the people who hate me so much, politicians, because they're all about pointing out what's bad and, and they want to destroy it or silence it. But whether you like what I do or not, I'm creating something, I'm putting something into the world. Mm -hmm. I think that that makes me a better person than a lot of the people that hate me. Heaven. Now, what's your idea of, say, heaven? Um, I, th I really think that those are, you know, man-made ideas like Santa Claus and the Easter Bunny, you know, to, to keep people in line, to give them some sort of... I think it's kind of uh, selfish to say, well, I'm going to behave so that I get to go to heaven. Why don't you just want to behave, period, you know? I think it's uh, when you put uh, an agenda to it. That, that's the hypocrisy that exists in religion. The people that want so badly for you to go away, are you in some way afraid of them? I'm afraid of what they represent. That's a sad thing that I learned most about religion over the past year is that God exists more in art and in music and creativity than it could in any religion because there's too much anger and fear and hatred there. Welcome to the altar of Marilyn Manson, the most controversial rock and roll act on the road today, coming soon to a sold-out arena near you. If 
I've always identified with the character of Lucifer in the Bible. Taking the names of two American icons, Marilyn Manson creates a performance that is a paradox of glitz and horror. The ghoulish makeup might remind you of bands of the past, but if you think they were outrageous, then get ready for the new king of shock rock. As the, the Beatles were bigger than Jesus, Marilyn Manson is bigger than Satan. The most ironic thing that these people always fail to realize is that the lack of hospitality that they greet someone like me with is just very unchristian. I think that's the biggest paradox of all. As a kid, I remember all the bands that I ended up listening to, David Bowie and Black Sabbath and Kiss and things like that. I had heard about all of them through my church because I was told this is what I wasn't supposed to listen to, so I went out and bought it immediately. The forbidden fruit Brian Warner savored as a boy, Marilyn Manson now dishes out to a hungry new generation of fans. And it doesn't take long to see what makes Manson so shocking. He takes shots at Christians by portraying evangelists as fascists and tossing a torn up Bible into the crowd. You know, in the past, people have always, you know, hid their horns, so to speak, because uh, they've always backed down when people confront them about the darker side of, you know, man's nature. But I, I don't think it's something we should be afraid of or ashamed of. <laughs> Rising out of the South Florida club scene, Manson comes to town riding a whirlwind of national publicity. Rolling Stone readers named Manson Best New Artist. But not everyone in Wheeling is looking forward to tonight's performance. We must continue to pray. Presbyterian Minister George Kurtz and others in the Christian community are outraged over Manson's reported involvement in the Church of Satan. Marilyn Manson, uh, he's evil. The Church of Satan worships neither God nor the devil and teaches people to believe only in themselves. It's a theme common in Manson's music. Everyone sees me as this bad person because of what I'm saying, but what I'm saying is in everyone. It's, it's the part of you that no longer uh, has hope in, in mankind, and, and you realize that, you know, you are the only thing you can believe in. That's really the bottom line. Unfortunately for them, usually with all of their complaining and protesting, they end up just selling more tickets. And this may be what his detractors find most shocking of all. The sales of Marilyn Manson's latest album recently went triple platinum, exceeding three million copies worldwide. I think people are just afraid of things they don't understand, and uh, maybe they're not meant to understand me, but uh, obviously some people do, and that, that's important to me. Whenever I write a song and it becomes uh, something played on the radio, uh, it's, it's my way of... Uh, it's a bit of a trick for me. It's a prank because I'm singing things that no, you wouldn't normally find in a pop song. So people are humming along to something that's quite subversive in a way. Yeah. And they, they don't know what they're singing. Yes. And suddenly they realize that it. And then they're captured by the forces of evil. Yes, and they can't stop singing it yes. at night. <laughs> and and do, do you feel offended nowadays by... by these rude attacks on, on you and your work by either, well, call it society, or if it's on an official basis or private basis. Do you feel offended or don't you care anymore? Um, no, I think that there's two levels to what I do. There's the artistic level, which is meant to reach people who are open-minded and enjoy th things like music. And then there's uh, the provocative level that's meant to piss people off. So the people that attack me are usually doing it because, in a sense, I'm telling them to. And they're so dumb. They're just really doing what I want them 
uh, to do. Yeah. So now that uh, we're quite successful in America, they've sort of jumped on a bandwagon. You know, initially where they dismissed us, now they praise us. It's kind of predictable, so, you know. I don't consider it uh, flattering or when they uh, dismissed us in the beginning, I never considered it an insult either. What I do isn't that different from what someone does in church on Sunday. I, I have a vision of the world. I get up in front of a, a large group of people and I say it and they pay to see it. And I think they do the same thing in church. And uh, it's interesting because um, one is considered more righteous than the other. But it's only because of popular belief. Right and wrong is just, you know, what's popular. It's not really anything to do with morals in the end. I don't necessarily expect people to understand everything that I have to say, but the things that I do that are provocative should piss people off. But the things that people were saying that I did um, are just childish and irrelevant. It has nothing to do with our music. Uh, Mr. Manson, may I call you Mr. Manson? You sure. Uh, from Seconds Magazine, you're quoted as saying, you have to take responsibility. You reap what you sow, and you have to clean up after yourself. I'm sick of people always trying to blame movies, bands, songs, or talk shows for whatever. Teen suicides, drug overdoses, everything else. If someone's stupid enough to kill themselves because of a song, then that's exactly what they deserve. They weren't contributing anything to, success, uh, to society. It's one less effing idiot in the world. There's too many people. If more people killed themselves over music, it wouldn't disappoint me. It would disappoint me in that it's sad that people are that stupid. Exactly. Um, we try and discourage people from even coming on the stage because that's my place of business. If you come where I'm doing my business, then you should plan on doing business or you're going to get hurt. What, doing business? Uh, in other words, if they well, come up on the stage... I mean, there's a lot of heavy instruments and things like that. If you're coming up there, you're going to get hurt. There's a good chance. You know, we try and discourage people to, from coming on the stage. But how do you do that? We make an announcement before the show. But if somebody comes up on the stage, they're likely to be... Well, the bouncers shove them back out, and well, that's so how they end up getting hurt all the time. Well, yeah, so I do, too. If they hit me, I'm going to hit them back. Right. Uh, here you are with a bit of profanity with a stage crasher. Watch this. Uh, Marilyn Manson, the performer, uh, encounters a citizen from the audience and says what? <laughs> That's funny. I feel sorry for their lack of intelligence and their close-mindedness. Uh, I almost look at them how, you know, most of mankind would look down upon apes as being a lower form of intelligence. I don't expect someone who is so um, close-minded about their religion to understand me because I think that I've evolved into a, a different level that's beyond their experience and it's something that you can't explain to people like that they have to find it on their own i can't try and make them understand why i think the way i do they're not capable of understanding it well i'm very much into philosophy a lot of different philosophers that i've read over the years like uh nietzsche uh darwin freud uh alistair crowley and uh, finally, Anton LaVey, and uh, fortunately, he's, you know, still alive, so I got to meet with him and talk about his ideas and things like that. And uh, in America, Satanism is uh, sensationalized and kind of misunderstood, and people associate it with worshiping the devil and things like that. But it's really a philosophy about... Uh, individuality and self-preservation it's about uh, you know being your own god and uh, you know that's a lot of the things that I've agreed with so that's why uh, I became friends with him but by no means is that uh, you know the only idea that I associate myself with because I incorporate a lot of different philosophies into what I'm about including Christianity you know there's a lot of uh, valuable lessons to be learned from the Bible I just feel that the way a lot of people uh, interpret it particularly in uh, the USA uh, 
is very hypocritical and and that's what I try and open people's mind to that there is different ways of looking at things rather than what we've been told over the past several hundred years what's your message what are you trying to get across in the lyrics to these songs it's always about being yourself and, and not being ashamed of being different or thinking different. Um, I try and take everyone's ideals, common morals, flip them around, make people look at them differently, question them so that uh, you're not always taking things for granted. All right, Noble, but why the bizarre get up? I mean, why the eye, why the nail polish, why the Satan stuff? You're a minister in the church of Satan, right? No, not necessarily. That, well, was, that, mean, was, that was something uh, earlier. I, no, no, no. It was a friend of mine uh, who, who's now dead who was uh, a philosopher that I thought that I learned a lot from. Um, and that was uh, a title that I was given. So a lot of people made a lot out yeah, of it. Yeah, but I mean, look, if you're a reverend it's not in a real church job. of Satan. I didn't get paid for it. <laughs> but why, if you want to get those kids, those lonely right. kids, and you want them to be able to be creative mm -hmm. and burst out of that, why the bizarre presentation, which can be misinterpreted? I think everybody's got a presentation. Everybody looks a certain way because they want to convey a certain image. You look a certain way because you want people to listen to you in a certain way. Are you uh, an exhibitionist? I'm kind of shy, and I think that I take that out by performing in front of a lot of people. That's how I get out my shyness. So but you've some done ways. some pretty bizarre things on stage. Um, you encourage kids to have sex. No, I, I, I don't. Uh, I, I do have a lot of sexual imagery in my performance, mm -hmm. but... I don't think it's uh, ever encouraging anyone to have sex. I think I just show my own sexuality, but I don't think I've ever really written about having sex or anything like that. But mm -hmm. I, I think that's, a, again, another thing that parents should be deciding. Okay, but remember now, a lot of kids don't have parents that really sure. care about them. Sure. And those kids tend to gravitate to people sure. like you who if they some see. Kid, if a kid asked me, should I have sex, I'd say, how old are you? And I'd say, well, I lost my virginity when I was 16. So there's my inspiration to you. All right. And uh, I would have tried sooner, but I just couldn't find any girls that like me. You're a pretty well-spoken guy, yet in your records you use a lot of F word, a lot of swearing, and this and that. Again, is it necessary to get your message across to use that kind of language? Is it you use the sexual imagery, you use the shocking um, um, physical appearance, you've done some bizarre things on stage, and you use... Um, profanity. All that necessary? Sometimes. I think sometimes when you're making a point, I don't think that my lyrics are uh, overlaced with profanity because I myself don't speak uh, using a lot of profanity in normal conversation. But I think when you're making something aggressive and you need to get a point across or if you're angry, sometimes profanity is necessary. It's better to use a curse word than to hurt somebody else, I find. You can take some of your lyrics as, you know, you'll understand when I'm dead. I mean, Disturbed kids could take the lyrics and say, you know, when I'm dead, everybody's going to know me. Well, I think that's a very valid point, and I think that um, that's a reflection of, a, not necessarily this program, but of television in general. If you die and enough people are watching, then you become a martyr, you become a hero, you become well-known. So when you have things like Columbine and you have these kids that are angry and they have something to say and no one's listening, the media sends a message that if you do something loud enough and it gets our attention, then you will be famous for it. Those kids ended up on the cover of Time magazine. The media gave them exactly what they wanted. and That's why I never did any interviews when that happened, when I was getting blamed for it, because I felt that I would be contributing to what I found to be uh, reprehensible. So you don't believe that your songs reflect any kind of suicide wish or anything like that? Uh, no, I, I feel that my songs uh, talk about getting through feelings like that, and it just, I think it's my job as an artist to be out there pushing people's buttons and making them question everything, and, uh, and I respect you for challenging me, and that's why I came on the show. I think church is, has very little to do with spirituality. I think uh, it's something you have to find in yourself. It's about uh, expressing your, your deepest fears and your emotions and, and putting it in something. Uh, it's not about living in fear and praying and hoping you're not going to go to hell. That's not very spiritual to me. Usually people hate what they're afraid of. It's kind of the classic story. Um, I think that even kind of goes back to uh, Jesus, you know. 
they were afraid, didn't understand him, so they killed him. And I think that probably horrifies Christians more than anything to hear that. But I don't disagree with a lot of the ideals that he was trying to get across. I just don't like the way people have used them to exploit others and to make you know, even children feel guilty for having imagination and wanting to be individuals. I like to look at all different religions. You know, I find valuable elements in, uh, you know, Judaism and uh, Satanism and Buddhism and, uh, and in Christianity as well. I think you can just take different things that, that you can apply to your life. But if, if you follow any anything solely, you know, that's, uh, that's as stupid as listening to everything that I have to say. Glasgow, there was a mother who I met after the show and her daughter had killed herself because she was always being beat up at school and she couldn't take it anymore. And her mother wasn't blaming me for the suicide, but she wanted to meet me because the girl um, related to me and idolized me, she thought. And that was very hard to meet her and um, she was happy. And I think it was important to her that, that I talked to her and it was important to me. It was very sad. and. You know, I dedicated the song to her because I thought it was um, some, a story that we could all relate to. And, uh, you know, there's there's been several other occasions where I've met um, fans that, that were, you know, terminally ill and, and dying. And I've just told them, you know, just enjoy every every day to the fullest. That's, some, that's all you can do, you know, because I don't know if I'm going to die tomorrow. So I'm in the same position as you are. And th those are always difficult situations. <laughs> seen plenty of bad things happening but I don't think you can ever determine what the cause of it is mm -hmm. you know someone may look a certain way or act a certain way and maybe it's um, their interpretation of me but the reason they might be doing that is because their parents aren't listening to them so it's hard to say where the, what is the cause you know is it bad parents or is it the music mm -hmm. so I try not to ever look things on those terms because if you start to do that then you start to censor your own thoughts and you shouldn't be punished for your own thoughts and art should be able to be what it is because it's people's job to be, you know, if you want to have the freedom to listen to something then you also have to have the responsibility that goes with that to be responsible for your own actions. And when you have a slave you have to feed it um, small uh, mice. No, I don't have any regrets. If I've ever made mistakes, I just try and learn from them. Or, you know, that helps me shape the way I create things. If I think I did something that was too much, then I would just think it was a mistake and I would learn from it. But I don't have any regrets. I don't think you can live your life with regrets. I like the idea of teaching. It's probably, in some strange way, what I would possibly do in another reality. I always try to explain to people that I think that art is far more important than politics and for some people like me it is, it is the closest thing that can be religious um, I think the idea of God is supposed to be about creation so I think artists uh, put things in the world so I think that that ultimately is spiritual for me do you feel that the government or the establishment of powers that be that they use religion and the media in order to um, manipulate and dumb the people down so that they control us. I think that's the, the principles in which religion was created in the first place. I'm not someone who does not respect religion if that's what someone believes in, but I don't care for the way religion is used to manipulate people. Uh, do you feel like we're entering some kind of like new proverbial like dark age of censorship and do you feel that that's fodder for for new art or is it going to be too restrictive ultimately I think it's you know it's the government's way of trying to show us what we know that art is important the fact that they're trying to stop it or control what it says justifies what we're all talking about right now but who was to blame 
all the experts had an answer. Angry, heavy metal subculture. Where were the parents? Violent movies. South Park. Video games. Television. Entertainment. Satan. Cartoons. Zoom. Society. Toy guns. Drugs. Shock rocker. Marilyn Manson. Marilyn Manson. Marilyn Manson. Marilyn Manson. Marilyn Manson. Marilyn Manson has canceled the last five dates of his U.S. tour out of respect for those lost in Littleton. But the singer says artists like himself are not the ones to blame. This is perhaps the sickest group ever promoted by a mainstream record company. After Columbine, it seemed that the entire focus on why the shootings occurred was because the killers listened to Marilyn Manson. Two years after Columbine, Manson finally returned to Denver. There were protests from the religious right. But I thought I'd go and talk with him myself. When I was a kid growing up, music was the escape. That's the only thing that uh, had no judgments. You know, you put on a record and it's not going to yell at you for dressing the way you do. It's going to make you feel better about it. I definitely can see why they would pick me, because I think it's easy to throw my face on a TV because I'm, in the end, sort of a poster boy for fear, because I represent what everyone's afraid of, because I do and say what I want. The two byproducts of, of that whole tragedy were uh, violence and entertainment and gun control. And how perfect that that was the two um, things that we were going to talk about with the upcoming election. And also then we forgot about Monica Lewinsky and we forgot about the president was shooting bombs overseas. Yet I'm a bad guy because I've, I've sang some rock and roll songs. And who's a bigger influence, the president or Marilyn Manson? Do you know I'd like to think me, but I'm going to go with the president. Do you know that the day the Columbine happened... The United States dropped more bombs on Kosovo than any other time during that war. I do know that, and I think that that's really ironic, you know, that, that nobody said, well, maybe the president had an influence on this violent behavior, no, because that's, that's not the way the media wants to take it and spin and turn it into fear, because then you're watching television, you're watching the news, you're being pumped full of fear, there's floods, there's AIDS, there's murder, cut to commercial by the Acura, by the Colgate. If you have bad breath, they're not going to talk to you. If you got pimples, the girl's not going to fuck you. And it's just this, it's a campaign of fear and consumption. And that's what I think that it's all based on, is the whole idea that keep everyone afraid and they'll consume. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's really right. as simple as it can be boiled down to. Right. If you were to talk directly to the, to the kids at Columbine or the people in that community, what, what, would, what would you say to them if they were here right now? I wouldn't say a single word to them. I would listen to what they have to say, and that's what no one did.